In this video, we'll be continuing the development of the modular robotics framework. I'll give you a walkthrough of the new leg mechanism in each step of the assembly process. So keep watching to follow along on each leg of the journey. For those of you who are new to the channel, I've been creating an open source robotics framework for the last few years. It's primarily built in Python with an Arduino serial connection to connect servos, battery management and anything else I want to add later. To support development of the framework, I built a small bipedal robot with face recognition, motion detection and a few other features. I documented the build process in previous videos, so check out the playlist linked in the description if you want to find out more. The original leg I created for the robot was very simple. It relied on MG92V servo motors that were directly connected to each section of the joint. This meant it had a good range of motion but was very fragile. And after a while I found the feet would disconnect randomly despite adding screws to fasten them in place. I wanted to build something that was more stable, able to handle more weight and much more durable in the long term. I tried a few versions, first with a larger gear ratio so the servo could bear more weight with a reduced range of motion. Then I tried using a timing belt to achieve the same effect with a less uh, ridiculous looking mechanism. This worked well but put a lot of strain on the servo spline, which was the opposite of what I was going for. The new version is a combination of these concepts and uses a completely redesigned frame and herringbone gears to enforce the alignment in a one-to-one -one ratio. Because this design is modular, if I want to change this ratio later, I just need to reprint the gears and swap them out. This version is still 3D printed, but uses PLA Plus as it's less brittle than PLA. I'm using PLA Plus from eSun as it has good reviews and I'm printing on an Ender 3 Pro at 215 degrees. I specifically modeled the form of the leg to fit a standard servo and used that to determine the dimensions. I wanted to make as few unique parts as possible to make it easier to keep spares in case anything breaks or wears out. So each section is made of duplicate pieces and each leg is identical except for the direction of the foot. So there's no need for mirroring. They can also be either 3D printed or CNC cut hopefully. Once I've finished iterating the design, I'd love to make a version out of metal. Each part can be 3D printed without support. In the case when there are holes with indentations on both sides, I avoided the need for support by adding a single layer to support the start of the screw hole so that the printer uses bridging, which can then be perforated after printing. Without this, the printer would try and draw the hole opening in mid-air, which ended up a mess. Rather than overstressing the servo by using it as a joint, as in the last design, I wanted to hold the weight of the robot using bearings. I use skateboard bearings because they're readily available and reasonably cheap. They have an 8mm internal diameter, so I used some M8 bolts that I had from a previous project to hold the joint together. I also used M3 hex nylon standoff screws as spacers, and the lengths of the various spacers determine the depth of the mounting, as you'll see later. For alignment around the M8 bolt, I 3D printed some spacers. The length of these turned out to be critical to the alignment of the sections and the joint, so I ended up printing a few in 0.5mm increments, and then testing to find the best fit. As you can see, this leg offers a reasonable range of motion with the 180 degrees supported by the servos. It also has the benefit of being able to rest on its own structure so I can have a static unpowered pose or have the servos actively supporting the robot for animation and eventually movement. Now I want to take a second here to talk about the servo strength. You might think that because I've upgraded the standard servos with a higher stall torque that the leg can support more weight, but that isn't necessarily the case. And it's something that you need to be careful with when you build something like this. So what do I mean? Each servo has a rated stall torque. That means the weight the servo can hold before stalling. The original servos, the MG92Bs, have a stall torque of 3.1 kilograms per centimeter at five volts. The new SG5010s have a stall torque of nearly double at 5.5 kilograms per centimeter at around 4.8 volts. But here's the thing. Stall torque means that at a distance of one centimeter from the center of the servo spline, that's the weight it can carry. If you double the distance to two centimeters, the weight it can carry halves. So if you make a leg that has joints 10 centimeters apart, like this, then in theory, the weight it can carry is now 10% of the rated stall torque. 
the legs of the old robot were 5.5 centimeters, meaning the smaller servo had an adjusted stall torque of 620 grams. The new legs are 9.4 centimeters, meaning the adjusted stall torque with the new servos is only 585 grams, so slightly less than the old version. Since we're supporting the weight on both legs, you can double that, but it means that we can only carry just over a kilogram before we hit that limit. It's more complicated than that. As you can imagine, if the weight is distributed more over the center of the servo, then the torque required is less, something called radial distance, but this is planning for the most extreme cases. I'll include a link in the description that describes this calculation in more detail. As you can see, we have a fair number of parts. I batched these on the printer so we could print a new section, which is the support from one joint to another, and the standard lengths of the standoff screws mean that the legs should be identical every time. So let's get started. I'm going to use this leg as an example just to show you what I'm going to be building and we'll just assemble it from the top down. So we have to be a little bit careful here. There is a specific order in which we need to assemble things. So I'm going to take one of my servo motors and I'm going to slot this on the top like this. Now you can see that there's actually a groove or a channel inside where the channel from the mount connects. So everything should fit flush with the leg itself. Then I'm going to take the screws and I'm going to attach the servo that way. But first what I need to do is make sure that I have the base in place. Now this side's a little bit more complicated. You can see that there's an output for the wires here and normally that wouldn't fit because there's actually some 3D printed material in the way. So what I've done is I've printed this so that there's a tiny sliver there so that when it's used for the top it looks like it's a solid piece but underneath you can see there's actually a decent amount of space there. So all I'm going to do is just take a pair of snips and I'm going to cut that out so that we can actually use this to pass that little piece of the wiring through in order to close everything off. So once I've done that, there should be a gap for the wiring so I can feed that through and then with a little bit of wiggling, we should be able to get that attached in the right way. We need to be a little bit careful about the orientation, make sure that the hexagonal holes are pointing upwards. And then we just press that firmly through and we can see that, that fits there. Then what I'm going to do is add the spaces. So I'm going to use my original leg as a reference. And I'm going to take a spacer and just sink that into the gap there in the two places that are closest to the servo and they should be identical. And on the other side, we don't want to do this because actually there is a, um, another 3D printed piece that has to go on top and that obscures these gaps. So let's just push that down there for now. And then the idea is going to be to try and fit some screws in. Now we always want to use the shorter screws that we have available. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go for the shorter of the two screws and I'm just going to screw those in place and make sure that that's nice and tight but not over tightened because these are just nylon and we don't want to strip the threads. We have two supports, one on either side and when you push down you should find that this is as level as we're going to get it and, um, and it allows us to screw into the top as well and then the final piece is we need to connect this part which is the inner support for the joint so we're going to put that in there and then same kind of deal we'll just pass through the longest of the three screws and the idea for building the bottom rather than the top first is it's a little bit easier to get all of this aligned because we have these hexagonal holes. So this section needs to be added to the top uh, and basically all we should be able to do there is push this down. The only real thing to make sure we're doing is that the hexagonal holes there line up with these. If they don't it's not going to marry very well and you'll need to be adjusted but luckily we can reach in with a pair of pliers and just give that a little bit of a tweak. Uh, and then eventually it should push down and it should sit firmly against the top of the servo. And then it's just a case of getting some of the smaller screws and putting those in place on these back two, the two closest to the bearings. The other side we do need to have the gear attached so we're not going to do the same thing there because we have to screw all the way through the gear in order for that to function. And then on this section we need another spacer identical to the one that was below and then we need the gear. So that is effectively one of the sections completed. All we need to do is do that again a second time and then we can get on to assemble the foot. 
and it's a very similar system it's a little bit more simple because we don't have to have all of the various pieces that come off and connect to another part so that's all of the various sections assembled and what we're going to do next is just go through and add all of the bearings and then join everything together what we have is we have the three main components of the leg i'm going to put that one down so you can see a little bit better so we're going to connect these sections together and they inter interlock like that but one of the things that we have to be careful with is there needs to be a little bit of a spacer on top of each of the bearings and then in the gap in the middle there as well. And it's just a case of screwing that through until it gets to the point where you see it coming out the other side. And then we move on to the next one. And the next one is actually identical despite the fact that it's a, um, it's a foot. But you've got to remember the orientation again. So we're just going to make sure that we fit them onto this side of the foot so that it mirrors that one and that is the leg assembled so there's the two legs now obviously the thing that's missing are the two herringbone gears now I tried a lot and I do mean a lot to actually have a nice fit on the servo I got it working and then I printed more and it didn't work and it was just a whole kind of mess so in order to fit these on I've taken the original gear which is just slightly too small for the servo I've actually warmed it with a, a lighter just to uh, soften the plastic a little bit and then push that on so it makes a good fit. And then as you can see, it does actually move the servo at the same time. And then all we can do is just take that and push that on in place. Now what I do want to do before we do that is connect these servos and make sure that they are actually all centered and in neutral position. And the reason for that is if you don't do that, then as soon as you start moving them they could extend past the limits of the actual device and you end up in trouble so i'm going to do that i'm just going to stick them into neutral and i happen to have a servo tester here which will do exactly that so all i need to do is set them into neutral while i'm fitting this stuff on and then we shouldn't have any problems so again neutral position is about halfway between the range of motion so we're talking about about there on the leg and then all I do is just slide that into the grooves, fit that on, and then we're going to screw that down with one of the servo's um, screws. So that's that one. And then we're going to do the same for this other one. So again, I'm just going to heat it, form it around the test servo, and then uh, apply it to the actual leg itself. Now, if that approach is a little bit too barbaric, what I do have is something like this, which is another uh, gear, exactly the same profile, but I've printed a space so that I can include one of the original servo horns as well. Um, and all I would do is push that in place, probably epoxy glue it, and then fit that instead. So I'm going to try those if these don't work long term. But as you can see, that fits on there. So again, neutral position, and we're just going to slide that on in place like that, and then screw it down. The next step is to take the body electronics, which is this PCB, and the batteries and power delivery board and create a body framework. As part of that, I'll create a stronger section that cradles the body and the legs can attach to. I'm not planning to support walking in this version, but I have planned the body so that there will be space to support lateral movement in future, which could facilitate this. The new leg mechanism is a combination of various design elements that offer stability and ease of assembly. With the use of herringbone gears, bearings and 3D printed components, the leg is much more durable and still has a good range of motion. The files for this project are available online, links in the description. Stay tuned for more updates as I move forward in creating the body and neck, as well as the latest version of the software using ROS2 on the Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching.